There's a brand new update in the Emu Deck Machine Initiative, and we'll have to talk about that. The so-called EM1, the Intel-based model, is dead. No more. What happened? But before that, if you like this video or any other video I make, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech lowlife really lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. In my last video on Friday, we talked about two versions of the Emu Deck Machine. One with Intel and one with AMD. And the Emunet community has heard you. They've heard that you don't like the Intel model and as such they've axed it entirely. Now the only actual model left is the EM2. So I'm assuming you don't need a refresher on the specs, but if you do, it runs an AMD APU. The APU features a 760M overclocked. It has four USB ports in the front and one USB Type-C port in the back. It's got a 512GB NVMe SSD to start, and it's got Wi-Fi 6. And this time they're saying yes, it's user upgradable. No question about it, the EM2 was always going to be the better value versus the EM1. But what's going to replace the EM1? Well, this is what this video is about. The DIY version. Emu Deck is now selling the case and some hardware, all for about $220 MSRP. The real kicker here is that this case is supposedly a mini ITX case, mini ITX being one of the smallest form factors for a PC possible. Your average mini ITX board is substantially smaller than your average standard ATX board. Yes, some people have built actual sleeper PCs inside actual Dreamcast shells. No GPU though. The DIY package also comes with front USB ports, a back USB-C port, Ethernet, HDMI, the Wi-Fi coaxial extensions, power and reset switches, and one more thing too, the power supply. The only thing we know about the power supply for certain is that it's a 200 watt power supply. Given the size of this case, I think it's an external power supply, but it's hard to know for certain. If I had to guess, they're probably using a Pico PSU to plug into your motherboard and such, and all of the actual power supply functions are external. Kind of like what you would see on a regular console or on a laptop. Personally speaking, I would have gone with one of these instead. This is an HD Plex power supply. It's very small and very thin, and it doesn't require an external brick. They have a 250 watt and a 500 watt model that's slightly bigger. So now comes the fun part. If you buy this and you provide your own hardware, theoretically you could get an Emu Deck machine for much cheaper than what they're selling it for. And we're gonna do just that. We're gonna use PC Part Picker to part all of our PC parts out. It took me a little bit to find all the parts I needed and also beat the price of the Emu Deck Machine EM2. So I will say we don't know the exact dimensions of the case, so I went safe and got myself a low profile cooler. But if the case is big enough, it could support a slightly bigger and more performing cooler. And because the power supply was only 200 watts, we couldn't go crazy on the parts. Not that we could anyways, because we couldn't fit a GPU in here. So the CPU I have here is the 8600G. This is the exact same APU they're going to use in the EM2. And for good reason. It has the Radeon 760M, which isn't the highest tier of built-in integrated GPUs, but it is pretty darn powerful regardless. Now normally I would have selected a Noctua NHL9i, but it was a little too expensive and we're trying to beat the EM2, so I went with a thermal right one instead. I've never used one of these, but I've read it's a pretty good pick, and at $24, why not? Some people say you should use a stock cooler, but I think the stock cooler might be a little too big for this build. The motherboard is a Gigabyte motherboard, and it's a mini ITX board because that's the only form factor that'll fit but also it was the cheapest one I could find. That said, reports suggest that it requires a BIOS update to actually support our CPU. It may ship with the BIOS update already done, but if your model doesn't, then you can contact AMD to give you a loaner CPU to update the BIOS with, and then you just send that loaner back to AMD. The motherboard looks pretty good, I've read the specs, and they all look great. To be honest, I wanted USB 4 on a motherboard to be able to plug up an external GPU, but to be honest, there's two things. First and foremost, those motherboards are prohibitively expensive. Second, we have a whole PCIe slot here. Depending on the size of the case, we could fit a whole GPU in there. 
it really just depends on the size of the case. You could fit like one of those mini GPUs in there. As for RAM, we settled with this ADATA XPG Lancer. I don't have any experience with ADATA memory, but I do know that this should be faster than Emudex memory, whatever they're using. While the supposed speed is 5200 megahertz, it is CL38, and it's rated for up to 7200 megatransfers per second, which should be faster than the typical EM2. That said, I don't think RAM speed makes too much of a difference, but every little bit counts. As for the SSD, this is a Kingston 1TB NVMe SSD. It's a PCIe 4.0 SSD, and it's more storage than what Emudeck gives you by default. About double, to be honest. Could I have gotten a bigger SSD? or a faster one from Samsung? Yes, I could have, but I also didn't want to spend that much money. So in the end, the base total before tax is $627.77. This beats the early bird pricing of the EM2 by like $50. You could buy a game or a controller with that amount of money. Of course, that's also assuming you get the case at its early bird price of $165. But if you did at MSRP the $220 price point of the case and PSU combo, it would cost you $688, which is almost $100 cheaper than the actual MSRP of the EM2. So what exactly does this prove? Well, this proves that building a PC yourself is always cheaper than building pre-built. But at the same time though, there are some people that just want to buy a PC and you know plug it in and play today instead of spending like a couple of hours building their own PC. There are also some caveats with our build. For example, we don't have USB 4, so we can't exactly plug an external GPU into it. Not like what you can do with the actual EM2. There do exist PCIe cards that add USB 4 slots to your motherboard. It seems like a neat idea, but honestly, if you're relying on using PCIe, then you may as well try to fit your own GPU in the case. But given the dimensions are unknown, we don't know if that's even possible. So all in all, this is a fun little exercise trying to build our own PC. The big challenge, of course, is trying to fit a GPU in there, and I would love to try that one day. If it's not possible, then I would like to try to bottom out the case and fit a GPU in there, making it slightly taller than an actual Dreamcast. Maybe I'll try fitting a CD drive on top to play games off of. I wonder if that's possible. Let me know. Till then, I'll see you guys next time. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.